Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the Final Fantasy Reflexes video, and today we're going to be looking at Lunar Festival Cleome, and what is she good at, what is she not good at, you know, her strengths, weaknesses, we'll talk about the, her own vision card, we'll be talking about the premium vision card, so don't, don't worry about that, it's going to be in this video. Anyways, let's look at it. So, she has got infinite turns, okay, pretty cool. Most units have, most units that come out on global have this already, but I just want, want to mention it because it should stay that way. Should not be trans shift. I hate trans shift units in that in that aspect. So she's got 150% amp, and she's got a store buff on on, on use Magnus. 200% uh, passively, 200% killers, 200% beast and demon. So if you're fighting a beast and a demon, or either or of those, at least she's got that covered. She has 200% LB damage. Of course, as you as I already called it in the news, if you have all right, EX2, and you have her STMR. Obviously, you'd have both of your at EX2. Uh, then she has 400% TDH. So I pretty much called that pretty obvious. Extreme Nova on both on both LBs, so she can fit onto a lot of teams. She has a bar fire aja in the Brave Shift form, so that's at 200% uh, fire resistance. Not two two. Both of her LBs are non-elemental, so it's the magic version that can be imbued. And she has fire, dark, and ice imbues. Dark and the ice come with 45% amps. And that's all I could really uh, think of as strings because there's a lot of flaws with her that makes me really sad because I love Clayon as a story character. But looking pretty bad for for our, for our pal Clam here. And so she's only got one use of a store buff and it's on a Magnus, an unrechargeable Magnus. So she has one turn in particular with under 50% amp with the store buff for mega damage and, and then after that it's not even I mean even with the even with that it's not even mega damage quote unquote uh, but it's okay damage. Um, her maximum mod without any help is only 395 times and that's at 200% morale. And with she's only got like two Three, she's at like 60 times mod boost, but only if you worked for it Because she has multiple avenues of getting those plus the the smile vision card Will give her a little bit more, but that's like a lot of that's a lot. That's, that's a lot of uh, needing a lot of things to get her to be good and So she has no fun or no 150% fire amp for all allies Nope And her killers are only 160% and you have to build them up. Older units have had better, like Chizuru, obviously. Even though hers are only single target, she does give some to everybody else. Uh, not really sure why. Uh, now we're going, we're going down. Uh, with a, you know, new units should be t t should be pretty strong or at least unique. And she is neither of those things really. And here's the last. Here's the biggest kicker because at this point they're not they're not pretending. That you don't know about the JB side anymore. Pretty much everybody knows about the JB side in some way. Even if you're a casual player, you kind of maybe see the thumb my thumbnails every now and then. And you're like, oh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, I'll see the title at least. Um, so most people that are playing know, at least know about the JP side. So they're pretending, hey, she's a fire unit. Scarlet Rain is going to be a top tier DPS even on the global side, guaranteed because of the eight times cap. Um, so. If you want to put her in the rain team, right? Probably not. I, I still think it's, it's not going to happen because even at 200% morale, which is the end game of Clash of Wolves bosses, she is not going to be that strong. She'll just be okay. Even in her maximum burst turn, she'll just be okay compared to what we have already. And that's, that's not good. That's pretty sad. Uh, she's supposed to be the headliner for this Clash of Wills and just like... Her modifiers aren't looking too good, and she has no really unique properties for herself. It feels like the guy who made Tsukiko and um, you know Esther and Sylvie and Roberta, though that guy must have been fired or left because he was tired of putting up with this. Or I don't I don't understand what's going on, but. Whoever is in charge of do making unit kits now doesn't know what they're doing. Is that rude to say? A little bit. 
Is it true? Yes. And I'm getting kind of sad because everybody always hypes up global units are better, global units are better. Forget about JP units. And that actually makes me really upset because there are some good JP units out there. People just completely forget about them. But this is reminding me of like, kind of like a JP kit, but in a bad way. Because there are some good JP units out there, but this is this this one would be passed up too. Because she's just a fire damage dealer at the end of the day with lazy killers. Doesn't really offer anything to the team. Her morale fill is you need her at EX3 for the morale fill for everybody. And her morale filling is only on her Magnus, I believe. So like other units like Tsuki Go at least have them on cooldowns where you can use them every now and then for more morale fill. Whereas she doesn't have anything like that. So overall, it's a mess. I think I think if you wanna if you wanna quote me and quote my video, just say quote it's a mess, unquote. So there you go. Alright, let's talk about her vision card. The level 10 is the only thing you should care about. It's the carrot. It's the carrot on the lure for you for the for the last one there. Because unlike Sylvie's, this one is actually able to be put on a DPS without any kind of you know downgrades. So you get fire and flight magic, and you also get to fill the morale bar there. So that's that's the lure. All you would need to get do is pull for one of her, and then and then put her in the shard dungeon or by the by the. Um, VIP coin shop, buy her shards and get her the X1 and you get the card. But you have to pull her first. So there's that. And I believe, yeah. We're gonna reveal, okay, let's reveal her score, guys. Brace for impact. I'm being very harsh in this video because she's limited time. She's my favorite character and it hurts, it hurts to reveal this. 6 out of 10. She can do damage. That's why she's not getting like a four. She can do damage and she can extreme over frames with everybody else that can do extreme over frames. But it's like, like, come on. That's all I can say. Come on. 395 times with no boosts and you need to be a 200% morale and her boosts are very small and she has no store buffs besides the one that she can use only one time of. Whereas other units have them on cooldowns. I don't know what they're thinking guys. I really don't know what's going on. Our global units now are no longer going to be the finally going to say, Oh, skip everything and pull for global originals. Because then you see something like this. And you just start keep saving. The leader of skill meta is coming soon. Dios. Well, may not be everybody's favorite kit. It will boost Sephiroth. It will boost Dark Reign's damage by quite a bit. Because their stats will be over 14k. And on, on global, uh, depending on when the True Wield buff comes, Dark Rain will be even stronger on global because his stats will be like probably like 15k. Because his STM are stacked. Whereas, I believe JP's STMR got changed to be higher, but you can't stack it. So, Dark Rain will be pretty good on global. Sephiroth, of course, will be very good on global. He's still a top tier dark DPS with Dios on JP, so this is why I've been hammering in your guys' heads, Sephiroth, Sephiroth, Sephiroth for a long time now, because he will be good. So 6 out of 10 makes me sad, but it is what it is, and let's look at this vision card. Now if we were if we were judging this based off of artwork, this would be hitting 100 out of 10, but sadly, we are not judging based on artwork, we're judging based on the, on the, on the abilities. So. This is not on the wiki currently. I mean, as of as of me making this video, it's not on the wiki. So, the only way you can know about this is if you looked on Reddit or someone told you, I guess. Like me, I'm telling you. So, the, the middle ability there, the cooldown, is 160% killers. Or self. That's it. It's a 10 turn cooldown. And it's only 160% killers, and you gotta waste one turn to use it. Because you can't multicast it with anything. Assuming I can't. You can't, anyways. Um, awful. That's all I have to say about it. Is that's pretty awful. Definitely not a must-have. The stats are only 130. It's not even equal 
Um, attack and magic, and you're not even getting 500 flat attack and magic on this. Only magic only. So even, like, you have to waste a turn to use this. Which, now you gotta set up another turn just to use this. It's just not good. It has multiple killers, but it's just not good. You may disagree with me. Because I know a lot of people, a lot of you guys love these kind of cards, but... This time, I, I don't think I'm off base. I, you gotta waste a whole turn to use this. Just, just that, nothing else. On your DPS, whereas if this was on like a support or something, if you could give this to someone else, it might be okay. But not, still not very optimal, but... The only thing good about this card is the artwork, in my opinion. The only thing good about it is the artwork. The killers aren't even 100% at the end there. It's only 50%. Pass on this. So, if you like clay on like me, just do tickets. Maybe do dailies. But that's about it. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go into this with, you know, a fork and a knife and say I'm gonna go in, go in pull. No, I would say no. So, with that being said, very disappointing. It made me very sad waking up this morning and re re the kit reveal, and it was disappointing. I was like, come on, man. They basically just took Ayaka's kit and just like watered it down even more, but gave her gave, gave her a brave shift. Giving even infinite turns brave shift is good, good. But you got to make them interesting. You got to make both sides interesting and different. That's the reason why there's a brave shift. Not just make one side filler and the other side where you like to be the most. Two B had the same thing. Two B almost has the same situation where. Her base form is just much better once you've got yourself set up. Both sides should be interesting and unique. Um, so if you're the new guy making units and you're somehow watching this video, I really doubt that. But if you are, you got to make units unique. Both sides have to be unique. Anyways, I'm going to get out of here because my voice is sounding terrible. Hopefully it sounds okay in the video, but it sounds pretty terrible for me. All right. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this unit and the vision cards down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.